Have you ever wondered why some English words look like others depending on how we arrange the letters and can be used for similar meanings? Take the word international for example. We can clearly see the word national in the word and we can see that there is a form of inter before the word national making it international. So does this make inter a word? And how about that al at the end of national? Couldn't that be separated from the word nation? We could take it a step further and add li to the end to make it internationally. So why does English have these forms? Nation, national, international, and internationally. Let's start with the word internationally. Native English speakers may recall in grade school we learned about root words. So in the instance of internationally, the root would be nation. Next, we can see the form inter before nation, creating what's called a prefix. Each form following a root is called a suffix. A prefix or suffix can be generally referred to as an affix. In order to explain how we find the root and the prefixes and suffixes of a word, we're going to use the analogy of a tree. We can use morphological word trees to break down each part of a word. For example, I could break down the word internationally to look like this. However, a tree diagram like this is much easier to visualize. Similar to how we use formulas to solve math problems, linguists use this method to break down the individual components of a word called derivation. Once each individual component of a word has been derived, we call these morphemes. To get an idea of what morphemes are, let's take a look at a simple word such as cats. Using a word tree, we can derive each part of the word cats into cat and s. Each of these components is considered a morpheme. The field of linguistics which studies how morphemes connect together to create new meanings is called morphology. There are two types of morphemes, free morphemes which are units of meaning that can stand by themselves, and bound morphemes which are units of meaning which cannot stand by themselves. Let's look at the example of the word beautiful. Here we can see the root is beauty and can stand on its own. We understand what beauty means. However, if we use the suffix full on its own, it carries no meaning. Inflectional morphemes are bound morphemes, which attach to the end of words. These are called grammatical affixes, and they do not change the category or the meaning of the word they attach to. The next category of affixes is where it really gets interesting, with derivational affixes. First, let's talk about derivational prefixes and suffixes for verbs. Notice that derivational prefixes don't change the category of verbs, rather they modify the use of verbs. On the other hand, derivational suffixes change the category of verbs, making them either adjectives or nouns. Moving on to nouns, we can start to see a pattern like verbs that prefixes do not change the categories of nouns. Once again, suffixes will change the category of nouns. Finally, about adjectives, Derivational prefixes don't change the category, but rather the usage. And derivational suffixes change the categories. Let's come back to our tree analogy and break down this word here, anti-surrealism. Typically, the final affix will determine the category of a word. In this case, it's anti. And since it's a prefix to the noun surrealism, it does not change the category. However, we can break down surrealism into its components. Now let's build a tree with the word concept. Here it becomes conceptual, and finally it becomes conceptualized, turning the noun into an adjective and finally a verb. And let's not forget that we can add an inflection to the end to change the tense, conceptualized. Thank you for watching, and I hope you found this video useful for understanding the morphology, or the formation of English words.